and then in that case we can display the appropriate error in here. So we're going to take a look at the error event uh, and apply this to the Ajax options option. So uh, we're going to uh, specify Ajax options, options and this is going to be uh, again in uh, curly braces. So I'm going to uh, supply the error option and this is going to be a function or the error event sorry within our Ajax options and this function is going to take in XHR index status and anchor now we don't require XHR index status but we do require anchor unfortunately we have to supply these parameters as well in order to uh, be able to use this anchor so if we do return an error what do we want to do well, we want to go ahead and uh, place an error inside of uh, our, our area. So essentially what we want to do is place the error inside of here. So we need to reference anchor.hash and then we can apply some HTML or some text into there. And the text I'm going to apply in is could not load page. So let's go ahead and just break this up a little bit just so uh, it looks a bit neater. Let's bring this down here and then let's go ahead and uh, bring this down here uh, just so it doesn't look as messy uh, let's check here uh, can come down there and this error function here can go ahead and come down as well so it's important that you uh, lay everything out correctly so we uh, you know have it looking nice and then our additional options for tabs can then be supplied uh, after this so they will be supplied here uh, so we can again come and bring this down uh, after we're done so now what's going to happen is we've set Ajax options and we've called the error status or the error um, yeah well, I guess you could call it status the uh, terminology doesn't really matter uh, and then we're taking the um, the specific uh, area that we're placing this uh, into so the anchor that's uh, applied to it and then we're just putting could not load page into there so let's go ahead and refresh uh, all the rest work when I click loop it says could not load page uh, because we're trying to load that loop.php file that I put into uh, the link earlier here so now that we go and uh, now we're going to go ahead and actually create this loop page so inside the PHP folder I'm going to store this as loop.php now inside here I'm just going to create a uh, just a simple loop that's going to run through numbers 1 to 10 so we're going to say for x uh, equals 1 uh, while x is greater than or equal to 10 add 1 to x and then we're going to echo out x and as well as that a line break we can just use a comma here so this essentially doesn't really matter if you don't know what this code does or how it works but it loops through numbers 1 to 10 echoes out 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 uh, with a break on the end of that so now when we actually click on loop you'll see that the uh, PHP file has been executed uh, in into this uh, content area so we're using an Ajax call uh, to actually grab the contents of loop.php so it's extremely easy to load external files just by putting them in the href as opposed to uh, using a hash selector and selecting the particular div that you want to show. So that's an interesting part about this as well. Uh, obviously more Ajax options can be uh, defined there. I do have an Ajax tutorial in this series so you can go ahead and check that out. Um, but yeah, apart from that, we're just gonna be using error. Uh, that's, I guess that's appropriate in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some more options that we can give this. Uh, the first one we're gonna be looking at is event. Now by default, we need to actually click on tabs to have them loaded. Uh, what about if we want to roll over the tabs and they load automatically as we roll over? Well, with the event option, we can go ahead and supply something like mouse over. And now when we refresh, when we actually hover our cursor over these tabs, uh, the content uh, displays. So depending on sort of like how you want everything to work and how uh, accessible you want each option to be, uh, you can go ahead and implement this option. It's quite a nice idea, uh, just depending on and you know how you want your user to view things uh, and if you want them to be able to click on them or hover over. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of that for now while we go on to the next option. And I'm going to choose this next option, which is collapsible. Collapsible. Uh, and I'm going to set this option to true. Okay, so let's go ahead and. Uh, refresh the page 
uh, you'll see that now uh, each option is collapsible if we double click on it. So we can select uh, tabs as usual and display content as we normally would. However, we can go ahead and collapse the content as well if we click on the same tab that's currently open. So I can collapse that content and it's no longer in view. So this would be more useful, for example, um, something that a user wants to, uh, you, well, let's just take the example. Let's say you had a few of these uh, under each other. For example, particular settings uh, for a user. Uh, if the user no longer wanted to see this, they could just click that and they could work on the rest of the page. Uh, obviously, this takes up quite a bit of space uh, in terms of if you wanted to keep your page nice and short. Uh, so the coll co collapsible option is quite a good idea in that case. So the next thing we're going to look at is making these tabs sortable. So for this, we're not supplying an option, but to the end of here, we're, uh, we're binding on uh, some a couple of functions that are going to allow this to be sortable. So at the end of this tabs just here, we want to go ahead and make these sortable. Now, usually we would go ahead and say sortable. Uh, we've already looked at sortable lists, etc., uh, and we can supply it with the option uh, access x because we only want to be able to sort along the x-axis. Now if we take a look at this you'll see that uh, essentially what we want to do is be able to say put loop at the start of all these and the rest shuffle along. However if you take a look at just using sortable and axis x you'll notice that when we pick this up it moves the entire um, row of tabs so it looks a bit messy and it's you know sort of not really working very well it looks a bit uh, you know, messy. There's no real functionality to it. It wouldn't allow you to really do much. 